Three, two, one, go. How's it going, guys? So, uh, welcome if you're a beginner to Nomad Sculpt. Uh, let's use this cute little axolotl that I just sketched out, and we'll just use him for um, our year first sculpt. Uh, it seems pretty simple. I think we can mostly use uh, spheres, and that'll be a good way to just show you how I block out a character and put it all together and things like that. So, pretty simple. So the first thing I want to do is export this image to uh, Nomad Sculpt. So I'll just save it as a JPEG. And you can import any image into Nomad Sculpt uh, for reference. So right now we're in, I'm in Nomad Sculpt. When you open it, uh, it should look pretty much like this. You might have a grid at the bottom. But uh, first things first, uh, what I like to do when I before I start sculpting is I like to go to this little camera icon and make sure that I'm in orthographic. And then I like to go to uh, this little sun icon and change from lit PBR to Metcap. And you also see this red line here. I like to go to the symmetry option up here. And well, I always keep mine on, but um, we'll be able to do this step uh, later. So don't worry about that right now. So we have our sphere and um, you actually have to delete the sphere that you have, so go here and then delete the sphere that's already there and just add a new sphere. Because um, the original sphere is way bigger than this sphere. Okay, so let's import our image. Okay, and let's hit transform, and then we can just scale it so it's not so big. And then tap the screen once you're done. So he does have sort of a, a little platform, so I just like to use a cylinder for that. Uh, for this sphere, let's just go ahead and validate it. Um, anytime you add a shape, you're going to have to validate it in order to get all of the tools. Um, and this is just a, a sphere, primitive sphere. So go back here to our scene, add, and let's start with a cylinder. And we can just use this as the ground. So I'll just use this dot. And then we want to use the gizmo, which is this little option here. And that's basically just like our controller. Uh, if you still have these up, these options up. The gizmo is sort of grayed out, so you just have to tap here, and then you see this gizmo. And this is just the controller to resize it. So we're going to use this orange ring to make it bigger. And let's make it flatter as well. Okay, so I'll validate this. And you might notice that your edges might look different than me. It might have something to do with, let's see if I can choose the right. Uh, it might have something if you go to here, the materials, it might just be smooth shading. If I turn it off, it looks like that. If I turn it on, it looks like this. So I usually keep mine on auto, which is usually on. All right. So the first thing I want to do is let's make his head, which is sort of ovular and we want to use this little cylinder up here to make sure that we're looking at the exact front so if you tap front uh, you know that this is the front so he's not going to be too tall i think that's pretty good but let's stretch it out so his head is wider so we'll use this red sphere to stretch his head out i think that looks pretty good Let's make it a little longer too. So we turn it on its side and use the blue to kind of stretch it out this way as well. So now let's block out the body and we'll just use another sphere for that. So something like this. So we can move it up a little bit, maybe make it a little bit, a little bit bigger. 
and we can go ahead and validate this. So now that we have two uh, meshes here, two shapes, we'll go into our scene and let's just rename them. So this one, we'll tap on the three dots, will be head. And this sphere, we can rename to body. And this, let's just rename it uh, floor. So now let's use this uh, body sphere. So just tap on that one and we can stretch it to give it its little tail. Um, so here's the tools. I don't usually, I don't usually use them when they're sh uh, straight down like that. I prefer it like this. So I'm going to use move first. So here's where it's important to know which direction you're looking at. Now remember, this is the front. So we're turning it on its right side, and this is right. So the tail's just going to come off on the back. So with the move tool, you can sort of pull it, but you have to adjust the size so that it kind of pulls sort of in like a teardrop fashion. And there also, there's also one more really important thing that you want to do. And just so you know, I double tap, double tap to go back with two fingers. Um, or just tap once with two fingers to go back. So when you're when you're shaping things like this, remember I was telling you about the symmetry before. So if you tap here and scroll down and you have show line, that's very useful. So this is the symmetry option and show line will just show the symmetry line. And that's the same thing as this, this red X. So that's the symmetry line. So here's the symmetry button. It's the same thing as this. We want to turn that on. That way, anything we do to this side happens to this side. So that's symmetry. And it's useful because when we're doing the tail, we want both the sides to come out. So let's just use move again. Let's bring it a little bit smaller. Uh, this is the intensity. This is the size, the radius. And we want to just pull this tail out a little bit, maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah, we want to just do something like this. Now you can push and pull. And I'm just going to push and pull it. I'll turn it. So it just matches the drawing a little bit. Let me pull it down a little bit. Maybe I'll try to get the tail to point straight. So that looks pretty good. And if you if you find that your uh, mesh is a little lumpy or it doesn't look smooth then just take the smooth tool, make sure you have symmetry on, and then you can sort of just smooth it. And everything should generally smooth out pretty well. All right. So now let's make his little legs. And for this, we're just gonna use uh, some more spheres. So we'll go here, let's add another sphere. And you notice that before we validate, this sphere is in yellow or orange. So I'll rename this legs. And again, you just go here to rename it because there's some other options here. If we want to clone it for the arms, uh, we can do that now. So like I'll hit clone. And now we have legs one. We can rename that to arms. And let's just hide it for now by like by touching this uh, little eye. So of course we want two legs instead of one. So I'm going to use this orange ring to shrink and kind of move it down sort of like this. And then we'll just use the mirror. I'll bring it out so you can see what I'm doing. And then we're going to use mirror. 
and essentially mirror just mirrors both both halves of the symmetry. Remember anything we touch has that red symmetry line. So the whole scene has a symmetry line as well. So when you mirror it, it just mirrors it on both sides. And sometimes it works uh, smoothly. I'm not sure why it's not showing it automatically. <laughs> it's a bit strange. But yeah, it's actually, it is mirroring. It's just working kind of funny. Uh, it's normally when I move left and right, they're supposed to go like this. But as you can see, for some reason, as you can see, for some reason, when I try to move them like this, uh, this one is staying here. Or it's moving along with it. So uh, hopefully that'll be updated soon. Because that is very confusing. But we just want to make them um, sort of close to each other. Pretty much like that. Maybe a little bit smaller, a little bit closer to each other. So then we just use the gizmo, we use these arrows to move them back in their perspective spots. That's a good spot for his little legs. And let's use stretch so we can stretch them out a bit. Something like that. And you can adjust them and feel free to, you know, you can make them a little more wide-legged or less wide-legged. I think something like this is pretty good. I think I like that. So I'm going to validate that, and then I'm going to use Move. Uh, still pretty small, because I think I just want uh, the legs to be a little bit wider at the bottoms. So I'm just adjusting them with Move. The same thing as before, just sort of pushing and pulling. And the only reason I don't have symmetry on is because if I use symmetry, it's going to be for just one leg. Um, and right now, we have a mirror, and these are both of our legs. So when you're working within a mirror, you don't have to use symmetry. Uh, because the symmetry is just going to be for one leg. So if I turn symmetry on, see it's moving both sides of one leg. Okay, I think that's uh, pretty good. You can continue to adjust. I think I might want to make his legs a little wider at the bottoms. So something like this. So now you notice that the legs are going through uh, the ground. So let's tap left. Whoops. Tap left like that. And then we can take the trim tool. Yours might be in a different spot. And I want to use the rectangle. So we're using trim tool and rectangle. And you can just make a rectangle. And just make it right below the surface of the, the ground. You don't want to make it up like this. Because then when we smooth the bottom, it'll sort of move up a little bit. So you want to do it a little bit lower. So then when I hide this, you can kind of see what's happening. So since I trim these, I want to recalculate um, the, the vertices, the polygons. So I want to recalculate what these pieces are made of because that will clear this up a little bit. So to do that, I'm just going to do a voxel remesh. And that just remeshes, that just recalculates the shape. So we go here, voxel, and then you can do it at different resolutions. The higher, the more dense the lower, the less dense. So let's do 150. And then just tap Remesh. And see, it sort of clears that up a little bit. But we're still going to smooth it. So now I'm just smoothing the leg. And if you go close, you can see things like this. You can see little, like, patterns. And that's just because of the Remesh. You can just make your smooth bigger, and you can smooth that out. Okay. 
and we are going to, we'll probably um, bring together the body, the legs and the head. So we might have to smooth, do some more smoothing as well. I just want his body to be a little bit more. Okay, that looks better. So now remember we had the arms before. So let's go back to our scene and let's uh, bring back the arms. And remember we didn't validate this yet. So let's go ahead and move the arms up and straight out. We'll tab mirror and then we'll move them apart. Ah, now it's working how it's supposed to work. We'll use the orange ring to shrink. And then we can sort of just move it into position. Make it a little bit smaller. Maybe we'll stretch it out a little bit. And see these blue and red and green rings? So that's just to rotate. I think that looks pretty good actually. So now he has two arms and two legs. So I'm gonna go ahead and validate this. Then you can go here and then you can validate uh, both of these. So we have join children, keep instances and uninstance. Join children will make uh, both of these just one piece. It won't actually bring them together or join them physically, but it'll just leave us with one mesh uh, with both of these. Keep instances will create two different meshes. So we'll have uh, the left arm, the left arm and the right arm, but anything you do to one will happen to the other because they're instance. Uninstance means you'll be left with a left arm and a right arm, but they won't be linked. So you can adjust them separately. So we want uninstance. I know that's kind of annoying or, or kind of confusing. Um, but uh, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible by not showing you the other options, but definitely play around with that and you'll, you'll understand what, what it means. So when you uninstance, now we have the, the left arm and the right arm, and you can do things to one arm. And it won't happen to the other one. So that's, that's what uninstance is. All right, so now we have, we have to know which arm is which. So this is the left. Left arm. And this can be your right arm. And we don't really need them in this, uh, but that's okay. We'll leave it in there for now. If you wanted to drag it out, you just long press and you can drag them out. Because both arms now are standing on their own two feet. So we wanted to raise this one. So let's just take our gizmo. And then we just have to adjust it in a way that looks like it's raised. So maybe we'll tilt it. Tilt it a little bit more maybe. Bring it out. Maybe we'll stretch it a little bit more. Maybe we'll bring it up a little bit higher. So something like this. So basically something like that. So we're going to do the same thing with uh, these little, these little, uh, I can't remember what they're called. I'll look it up again. But we want to put those on the side of the head. So probably like here. And we can do those with spheres as well. So we'll go ahead and add another sphere. We'll use the gizmo, we'll bring it up. And we'll move it into place. And obviously they're the same on both sides, so we can tab mirror and one will show up there. And now you can just adjust these. So let's stretch them out. 
Now let's angle them. And I kind of want them angled back a little bit. So let's angle them back a little bit. And then just sort of move them in, into place. That's pretty good. Maybe we'll make them a little bit smaller. And maybe a little bit flatter. So I'm going to take the blue and just flatten it that way. So I think these look pretty good. So I'm going to validate them. But we want to just clone these because we want to make three. So let's hit clone. And then you can move. And you'll notice that we're still within this mirror that we made. So now we just have the first sphere and the second sphere. And then you just adjust the second one. Maybe we'll make this one a little smaller as well. And maybe a little further up, just so we have some enough room for all of these, because we need a third one. So maybe something like that. And I kind of want them even further back. Yeah, there we go. So now we'll make another one. Let's tap on uh, the furthest one down. We can clone it. And then we have a third one. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. And then we just need to adjust it by sort of tilting it so it looks a little bit natural so that they're not, so that they're sort of spread out like this. Looks pretty good. Oh, I can also bring back the floor. All right. So now let's give this little character some eyes. And there's a few ways to do it. Uh, I like to add spheres. First, let's take this mirror and let's validate and join children. Okay, so the, these are actually his little external gills. So right now they're just called mirror. So I'm gonna rename them to gillies. And of course, if you want to adjust them, you can use the gizmo. Sometimes the gizmo goes to a weird spot. If that happens, just do pivot, reset, pivot. Now it's in the middle where it should be. And you can still sort of adjust this a little bit, you know, if you need to, or if you want to. I think I might be able to hit symmetry, yeah, and still go further back if I wanted to. All right, so let's give him some eyes and a face. Uh, you could just add two spheres. Uh, I think Axlatl's eyes are mostly black, but I you know I like to make character eyes. Obviously, for eyes, we're going to use spheres. So we'll do add and sphere. We'll do gizmo. And then we'll just bring it up essentially to where we want the eyes. So we'll make it small. And we can sort of figure out how big we want the eyes. Let's tap mirror. So maybe something like that actually looks pretty cute. And what I like to do now, once I kind of have a basis of the size and where the eyes are, maybe I'll make them a little bit wider. I think that's cute. I actually want to use a different tool. So for these eyes, let's go ahead and validate them. And I'm going to take both of these and validate join children and just call this 
eyes. So now we have eyes there. But I want to tap on the head and I want to use, um, let's use clay. So let's use the clay tool. We have symmetry on and let's use sub. So basically what that means is instead of adding clay, when you use sub, it takes away clay. And I just want to kind of go in a circle around the eye area. Like that. Just to give them some, some eye, you know, some area for the eyes. So now I'm going to tap on the, make sure that I'm on the head and smooth. You can use the smooth tool and just kind of go in a circle as well. And then you have just like a smooth little area for the eyes. So now let's use layer and sub. Make sure you have symmetry on as well. And what that does is with layer, it'll take away from uh, the head. But you see that it's not really, it's not really clear. So we have to make, we have to make the head a little more dense. So we're going to voxel remesh the head. So we'll go to voxel up here and we'll voxel remesh it probably around 150 is okay. And we'll go back to layer and that looks much better. So we'll make it small. I'll increase the intensity a little bit. And now we just have to figure out where we want the mouth to be. And then you just make a cute little mouth. And when you use layer once uh, and you lift up, then it starts a new layer. So you can continue to make this a little bit deeper. And then just keep going. So the mouth is a bit deeper, like that. And another trick that I like to do is I like to give this part a little bit of, a little something here. So let's just take clay. And we, we want to tap sub because we don't want to use sub. So now that we tap clay, it's going to add clay. And let's just add some here. And I'm just adding so it's kind of so it's right over where that upper lip would be. And this will just give that a little bit of shape there. And once we have that, we can voxel remesh again. So we'll go here, voxel remesh 150 again. Uh, and that will kind of stiffen up the clay a little bit, and then we can smooth. And be gentle with your smooth tool, because you you're smooth as well, because you don't want to lose a lot of that detail. Around the mouth. But once you have it, once the mouth is okay, you can go ahead and smooth out the rest of the head. But again, I think we'll bring all of this together, so it might be okay. Okay, so now he has like a just a little bit of a bump there for the nose. Okay, I think he looks pretty good. Pretty happy with him. Okay, so for these little, uh, I gave him some some more little details here. Uh, for that, I'll just add another sphere, tap mirror, and then use the gizmo and kind of bring it up. And I add this to a lot of my little characters, just for fun. So I'll just make it really small. And 
I'm going to put it pretty much in that area. I think that looks pretty good. So I'll go ahead and validate that. And then I want to go back into the layers, tag both of these, uh, validate. And I just like to call them I dots. And if you want, you can take drag, really small, and you can sort of stretch them down. Whoop. I'm going to have symmetry on. You can sort of stretch them down and then sort of push them and you get this this kind of shape. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. So now let's go ahead and color them. So let's uh, go up here and change from Metcap to Lit PBR. And then we'll go down here to the color. And we'll tap on that, this little sphere with the line through it. Uh, just go to white and then just make bring the roughness up to about 6.6. 6. Oh, but I have to, um, I want to take everything. So just go into the scene, uh, select everything. Oh, and I forgot to do this with the legs. So let's go ahead and validate the legs, join children, and then just name it legs. Okay. All right, so now let's take everything and make everything white. So we go here, roughness up to about 0.6 or 0.65 and do paint all. I just think this looks a lot better. And then what I like to do is take the eyes, go back to the color, and turn the roughness down all the way. So then you have shiny eyes and the matte body. So now we just have to figure out which parts we want to um, put together for him. And this is called voxel remeshing. This is to make a nice, smooth, uh, solid piece. So if we want to take the head, the head and the body, because uh, I know definitely I, I want to add those together or combine them. So then we do voxel and then we remesh at 200. And this will join the, this will merge the head and the body. So if we hit voxel, voxel merge, now there's, they're one piece. So it's sort of like it's soldered together. I'm gonna go ahead and save because I don't have auto save on. Axo 2023. So now we'll just take smooth and we'll just smooth out that connecting line. A crease. You don't just move it out that much. Sometimes the crease is actually nice because it looks like his head is tilted back on his little body. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And you can either join the arms as well, but sometimes I like to take inflate and I like to do a nice skin fold over. So I'm on the body, but even though I'll start sort of where the arm is, you can go like this. And you can make a nice skin fold. And it actually was on the other side. I probably should have turned symmetry off since they're not symmetrical. Um, so I'll turn symmetry off. That way we can do it on both sides. So I'll do one here. Whoops, make sure I'm on the body. Make sure I'm on inflate. So we'll do one here. Make it a little smaller. So we'll do one there. And you can also go back to Metcap if you want for this. You can kind of see it a little bit better. And then we'll turn to this arm and we'll use inflate again. And then you can infl inflate here as well. I 
I always think that looks pretty cute. And you can do the same thing for the legs or you can join the legs. I think I might join the legs together. So we have the body and the legs. So I'll take both of those and I'll voxel remesh, but I don't wanna lose any of this detail. So I'm gonna remesh it pretty high, maybe around 400. Okay, so now the legs are joined as well. I'm just gonna take smooth and symmetry and just smooth out the legs. Under his little butt. And if you ever needed to, if you didn't like something or if you wanted the clay to become softer again, then you would just have to voxel remesh at a low number. Uh, the only problem with that is that you would, you would lose detail if you added any. So that's the only thing with that. Okay, so let's take, uh, let's take crease. Uh, we don't want it on sub. Let's make it really small. We'll turn symmetry off. And you find the belly button. And you can just make a nice curly Q belly button. Should probably be a bit lower, but that's okay. So let's go back to lit PBR. And if you want to add little pieces down here, uh, it's really easy. You can just add some spheres. Maybe we'll shrink them, make them a little more flat. And you can kind of just bring them down where you want them. So we'll validate that. And then we'll do the trim thing again. So we'll just go ahead and trim this using the rectangle. So once you're done with the trim, just go back to your gizmo and you can maneuver it and you can clone it as well. So then you can go ahead and add some different, some different ones. You can kind of adjust them a little bit if you want. Clone, let's do another one over here maybe. Maybe we'll stretch it. Stretch it out some. So you can do things like that. And if you want little like grass pieces, which I think are kind of cute. Excuse you, that was the cat. I'm just going to join all these together, these little rock type things. And if you want little plump pieces of grass, I like to use spheres for those as well. So I'll just use a sphere. I'll make it really small. Whoop. Validate it. And I'll take drag. Make sure that symmetry is off. You can just kind of pull it down. Maybe take move, kind of stretch it out a little bit. Kind of push it so it's more flat. So you can do something like that and you can clone it. Use your gizmo. And just sort of adjust it like this, maybe make it a little bit smaller. So maybe something like that. We can join them together. These two join and just put like a uh, plump 
grass. And you can just bring it kind of down into the ground. Maybe we'll clone it and we'll put one back here. Maybe turn it a little bit, maybe stretch it out a little bit. Things like that. Move it over slightly. Okay, so I'm gonna join the grass together. Then we have the rocks and we have the floor. I'm gonna bring all of these down to the floor. And I'm just gonna paint them white again because that's just what I do for all of them. I, I like to paint everything white except for the shiny bits. And I kind of want to give them some little teeth. Uh, in order to do that, let's just take the eyes. We'll clone the eyes. We'll rename them teeth. I'll do pivot, reset, pivot, just so we kind of know where the pivot is. I'm going to bring them down, make them really small bring them out so these are just the eyes but I'm just uh, repurposing them for as teeth so make them really small and then kind of bring them up a little bit maybe a little bit smaller and if I want to spread them out I have to hit symmetry so then I can spread them apart again Flatten them out a little bit more. Yeah, maybe something like that. I just want to adjust the eyes a little bit. I want to bring them up. I'm just adjusting them a little bit because I feel like they're um, that's a little bit better. I think. Yeah. So I'd like to do something a little special with the eyes. Um, sometimes I don't like when they're just uh, round on the front surface. I like to flatten them out, like flatten the whole sphere out. So to do that, uh, it can be a little tricky. I want to use the gizmo, but I want to just flatten them this way. So it'd be nice if I could just uh, use a sphere here and flatten them down. So I'm going to take pivot. And then I can move my pivot. So I'll move it like this. And maybe that will help me out. So I'm going to tap pivot again. And then I'm just going to try to flatten these out. So if I pull the whole thing out, you can kind of see what's happening when I flatten them. And then you just have to position them uh, back on the surface as level as you can. So by level, I mean... You don't want to go up, you want to, you kind of want to go down like this. And you want to bring them down and away from each other. And you might even want to use the pivot again to adjust the pivot. I know that can get a little confusing. But you just want to put them sort of where they were. But you just want to make sure that they're nice and on the surface, so kind of like that. And that might be a little a little tricky, um, but take your time with it, you know? It's, it's hard to get used to the gizmo and things like that, so 
you know, that's just part of the learning process is just getting used to the gizmo and just getting things to go where you want them to be. But I think that's pretty good. And if you want to make eyelids, an easy way to make eyelids is to take your eyes, once you have them settled, clone them, rename this eyelids. So now you have your eyelids and you want to uh, use your gizmo to make them a little bit bigger. You want to get them in the right spot. Something like that I think is a little bit better. So remember, anytime you trim, I like to voxel remesh around 150 to kind of clean it up a little bit. And then I might just stretch it out. Whoop. Might just bring it out a little bit. Maybe tilt it back. Something like that. So let's just give him some fun eyelashes using the tube tool. We we'll use path and we we'll use snap. Snap just means that it won't, we won't, uh, the tube won't go like inside the head or it won't go anywhere crazy. It'll just stay on the surface. So by using path, we'll start probably around here. So I touch the screen, I drag up and then I let go. Then I go to the next spot, touch the screen, drag a little bit, let go, and then so on. And then one out here. And this one I'm going to touch so it's more of a right angle. And if you wanted to get rid of a node, or if you want to add a node, you just touch. If you want to get rid of a node, then you just bring two together, and it deletes them. So let's tap the little green, so that will bring uh, half of our eyelash, we'll hit mirror, and now we have two. I want to bring this off of the skin a little bit, so sometimes you just have to kind of be creative and go to a weird angle. Let's take it off snap, and now it should be able to come away from the skin. You can also adjust the positions by moving the nose. Maybe something like that is better. So I want to make this side a little bigger and this side a little smaller. And that's with radius. So you see radius here. It's on one. I uh, put it on two. And then you can make one side smaller and one side bigger. And let's hit spline. That'll make it nice and curvy. Let's bring this up a little bit so you can see it. What I like to do is make this side small, but then I like to bring it right into, maybe I'll make another little dot here. Make sure they don't go into the head. But I like to bring it right in there so that it's a clean. See how that's clean? It goes right down in that edge. And then this side, I'll just make bigger by pulling that node Think something like this. I think that looks nice. So we'll go ahead and validate this. And then we'll take smooth and just smooth off this edge. And I like to take flatten. And I like to just flatten one side so that you get a nice little shape. Something like that. And you can take drag if you want to sort of just adjust a little more. And just smooth this a little bit. Okay, he looks cute. Okay, so now we pretty much have the sculpting and modeling done. So Let's go to our camera and put it to perspective. 
And I like to just bring this back down to like 10 or 11 or so. Let's find a nice angle for him. I think I like something like this. So I kind of place it in the middle and I'll just uh, go to the camera, add view, and I'll call this one. And maybe you want to make another, another view, maybe like this. Add view and we'll call this two. So then we can always go back to our views. So now let's clear this by going to this little picture, clearing the reference. Let me save mine real quick. Okay, so now let's uh, do some light lighting. So we'll turn the environment off. And then we'll add one light here. Uh, that already looks pretty good. And let's make this light a little bit brighter. We can use this uh, shortcut bar up here. So we'll make that a little bit brighter. Maybe to like 1.75. Press these three little dots and then hit softness. Okay. And then we'll go to the next light. Uh, so here's our lights. Let's name this key. We'll add another light. And let's lower this down some. And let's rename this fill. So that's this light here. Let's move it over. Um, it's not really going to matter where we put these lights. This is the key. Put it over here. This is the fill. Oops. This is the fill. So for the fill, let's turn it to the shadowy part, just so you can see some light where the shadow is. So something like this. So we'll lower that down some even more. Well, we'll put it at like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 or so. And we want to soften that as well. Okay, so now we have these two lights. Um, let's add another light. And this will be this will this light will be fun. So let's make an edge light. So up here we'll go to spotlight. And now we have our spotlight here. Now this does matter where you move it. So push it all the way back. You may have to zoom out. And then angle it so it's facing behind him, but from the side. So something like this. So you just want to move your light behind him. And what that does, when I go back to view number one, this light, see how I move it around? And it gives a nice bright, let's make it a little bit brighter move it over some. It gives a nice edge here, and that's what we're looking for. This. Okay, it looks good. Let's soften this one too. I like soft shadows. And then the very last light uh, I like to do, so let's call this one edge. And we can actually take edge and clone it. And let's rename it top down. So top down is now a clone of edge. So we wanna move it right over his head using the gizmo. And again, take your time. Sometimes it's hard to kind of get control of the gizmo but you'll get used to it in time. And you just want to put it down so it's facing on his head. Face down on his face. So something like this. We will bring it up a little higher. So something like that, just so it's pretty much on the top of his head. Go 
can lower the intensity a little bit. And here's where you can change the color. So I like to make this one a cool color. So I'll tap this. I'll bring this to, this is a warm color. But when you change it up here, you change it to a cool color. So something like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now the next thing that I want to do, we're actually pretty much done. And one thing that you take, take note that this came back, and that's because I hit uh, this. So you want to do that, and then you want to go and press this little button, and it updates it. If I do two, the same thing, I'm sure. So just do that, and then go here and update it. So now we have one and two, and it won't bring back the reference. So this is looking pretty great. So let's, uh, last but not least, let's go back here and add the environment back. So this is my environment. Uh, the link's in the description if you want to use it. It's on my Gumroad. I think it's like a dollar. Um, but I like to bring this down. And you have plenty of environments that you can choose from. But I always use this one. I don't want it that bright, so maybe something like this. 1.34 or so. Then go here to post process. Put post process on. I like to turn up global illumination. And these are very high. I'll turn this down. Size. I'll turn this one down too. I don't know why these are way up. We'll turn the depth of field down for near. Turn this down. We probably don't even need depth of field for now. So that's looking a lot better. And once you once you have uh, post process on, once post process is on, I'll turn the render resolution down so I can still sort of move it easily. Then you want to just adjust your lights again. So I might bring the key light down a little bit. I think everything else might be good. Here's the fill light, which we might not even need. Edge light always looks nice, and then the top down looks nice as well. Uh, so the last thing that I like to do with these little characters is uh, change them to subsurface. So I'll take the legs, uh, the eye dots, the left arm, which is the left arm, the right arm, uh, the gillies. Uh, what is this? Oh, that's the eyelashes. I forgot to name it. Okay, I think that's I think that's it. Oh, legs is now the body, so I have to rename that. So for these, let's go here to materials. Opaque is just regular, but I like to do subsurface. I like to bring the depth down a little bit to maybe around one. Okay, so that's looking good. So then we can just color this guy. So legs is the body. Uh, left arm, right arm, we can join them together. This is the eyelashes, so we can validate these. Join children, and then rename it to lashes. Uh, teeth, we can also make subsurface. And then I think we're good to give him a quick color over. So let's make him sort of pink. So we make sure that we're on the body We'll bring up our colors and then we can find like a nice pink for them. So maybe something like that. And you can adjust the roughness if you want them to be a little more shiny. And the same color for the arms. And these would be a little bit uh, darker red. So maybe something like that.
the eyelashes are going to be a dark color. Usually I would make them black, but they don't have to be completely black. Maybe we'll make them pretty dark. And I like to bring the roughness up so there's no glare on them. I want them to be matte. So the eyes, let me make sure I hide my eyelids. I was going to do eyelids, but we don't really need them. Um, I might do them a little bit later. So for the eyes, you can just do black, but glossy. Like so. And actually, um, I might have to just adjust because uh, I want this to be on the edge of that, on the edge of the eyelashes. So I might just have to lift my eyes up a little bit. That's better. Bring them a little closer together. That's better. So now I'll take these, and if I want to match the color of the skin, we'll take this little eyedropper and then tap the skin. So now we have this color engaged, but I still want to change it a little bit. Whoop, I'm still on the skin. I have to tap, touch that. Now I can just adjust this to whatever color I want. I think maybe just a little bit darker than the skin. And then down here, you can figure out what color you want to make this. Maybe a sort of beige color. And these rocks can be maybe a similar beige color, maybe a little bit richer or more saturated, I should say. And then these, I think like a soft green might be nice. And you can adjust the color of the background as well by tapping the picture. Then you can adjust this a little bit. Maybe you wanna just make it a little more more pleasant something like this and that's pretty much it so there's a few things that I that I might want to change but uh, maybe I'll add them in a different video uh, I don't want to overwhelm you too much more than I already have So once we have, let's check out our views. Yeah, we have a nice view. We have some nice views. I think I want something like this. I think I like that. So I'll add this. Save. And then we can just go ahead and export. So we tap on the folder, go down. Um, you don't want to have transparency because then you won't be able to see the background unless you want that. Uh, make sure that I go back to post-process and put the resolution all the way up. And then we can do 4K. And we can export. And then that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, take your time with it. Have fun with it. Uh, sculpting is not scary anymore. I love doing it on the, on the iPad. And it just takes little by little, and you'll get more and more advanced, and you'll just get used to it. Uh, and you'll be able to create more and more amazing things. Hey guys, so although this is the end of the tutorial, I'm going to continue working on this. I might do a live video, so go and check out the live video. If you want to see more things and just more extras, like I might make him a little more smiley, add eyelids, uh, and maybe add a little bit of uh, some different colors for him. So if you're interested in that, then uh, just check out that video and I will put it at the end of this video as well. Um, all right. All right. Keep drawing, keep sculpting. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. And if you're really serious about learning, then definitely check out my Skillshare classes. Just go to my website, drugfreedave.com. I have 2D classes in Procreate and 3D classes in Nomad Sculpt. Keep drawing, 
keep sculpting, and I'll see you all in the next video.